But to make sense of, in my introduction, when I talked about we being a fractured nation, um, my guest today is Malaysia's top political scientist, Professor Dr. Wong Jin Huat. Um, you know, he's deputy head of strategy, Asia headquarters of UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. And when I went through his whole resume, which is larger than a bag, I, I was interested in one word, and that is solutions. And if there's anything that we need in this country today, are solutions. So join me to welcome Dr. Chin Huat to Hard Talk. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you, coming and thank you for giving us your time. And let me say welcome to Sabah. Thank um, you. you know, so this is where we don't often get visitors like yourself. And for me, it's the first time to have a, a someone of such a, of a high esteem. And, uh, you know, I watch you in all the conversations of every time there's an election, and I've always told myself that this is one man I would like to meet. So with the current coalition government, AMNO is the second largest uh, party there. Um, can it survive the G16 that's coming up? Possible, but it will not be easy. I'm not make the right choice to join this unity government because it has very little overlapping seats with PH, meaning they are not main competitors. In contrast, had AMNO joined PN, it would be number three after PAS and Basatu. Right. Uh, it would be confined, it would have to accept that it's going to be playing the third fiddle to these two main rivals. So you make the right decision here. But whether it could survive or not depends on ultimately two things. One, can it carve out a position that is compatible with PH in government at the same time, distinctive from PH? It cannot look exactly the same. Right. Because otherwise then it would not be able to expand its votes beyond the PH hard core. Right? Mm -hmm. This is product differentiation. Right. But of course, that position cannot be what it held in the past by slamming DAP, slamming PKR, trying to play communal heroes. Yeah. Because if you were to do so, you can win seats. But after that, you can't form government. Mm. It wouldn't make sense. Both your supporters and peer supporters would not accept it. So that's first part. Now, that requires deep thinking on how this party position itself as a respectable, professional, moderate nationalist party. Now, many Malaysians don't think it's possible. Malaysians who are liberal in leaning, a minority in background, like to think that all ethno-nationalist parties are reactionally, they, they are no good for this country. But the fact here is that we actually need a professional, moderate nationalist party. Right. Because only you have that options, the woods wouldn't go directly to PN. Mm. Now, the second challenge then is how can AMNO avoid this perception, whether being spelled out or not, that it is the new MCA. Right. Now, what do I mean by new MCA? Yeah, this is the first time I'm uh, enlightened us on this. Thank you. In the old days of Barisan National, MCA was the second largest party. Correct. Would always be given four minister seats in the cabinet. But MCA, no matter how hard it tried, it had a legitimacy problem with the Chinese voters. The Chinese see the Chinese saw MCA as I'm no representative to deal with the Chinese, rather than the Chinese representative to deal with AMNO. Oh, okay. Right. So therefore, um, uh, MCA people find very frustrated. They work very hard, but they get very little votes. Uh, the Chinese felt that we should have, you know, it's right for us to vote for DAP because they really protect the, the Chinese the and so on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. AMNO is getting into that problem. Because AMNO is part of the government, that allow AMNO to dish out patronage in many ways. That help AMNO to secure some of his support. However, if AMNO cannot strut off that image, 
that this is a new MCA, the Malay nationalist voters would think that even though I like AMNO, I'm going to vote PN. Right? Because AMNO has lost his soul. Now, the, this actually has been put up by many AMNO politicians, especially those who are not mainstreams, like uh, Isham Jalil. But the way they frame it is like, oh, Malay don't like AMNO working with DAP. To me, that is oversimplified. Right. What I mean is that, let's say you don't have DAP. Let's say DAP merged into PKR. You only have PKR. They will say, because Malays don't like AMNO to work with PKR. Basically, the real problem is AMNO is too weak. Right. Right? So it's, it's not a, a racial kind of problem. No, it, 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 it has is, to it do has... with it, but it's not explicitly because of DAP or whatever. It is... It is ethno nationalistic in the sense that Malay nationalists cannot accept that voting AMNO in for AMNO to be number two. Right. What they want is that if I'm going to vote for AMNO, AMNO must have a to... chance, must have a chance. Not as they have to be immediately number one. Mm. AMNO must have a chance to be number one, to work towards number one. Right. Right? How can that happen? It can only happen in two ways. One is that AMNO and PH would contest against each other, maybe just in a limited number of seats. So the idea then, Amno is not a bonsai brand, mm. right? MC was basically this is the seats. These are the seats given to you. You basically just fight here. You win forty seats. That's the most you can do, right? But you're not to change the main structure. Amno has to recognize this, that the national voters want to feel that they are assured that their interests are protected. But also I'm no need to make sure that it cannot destabilize the government because otherwise, why would PH want it? And I'm no wouldn't want to form a government with PAS and Pesatu. So they become three? Because it would be just like the last government right. under Muhyiddin, right? It's like three brothers going after the same girl. How can they be, how can they be loving to each other? It's a simple right. human nature right. issues, right? So come back to this. So how can they do it? One is actually to have friendly matches with PH. So for example, in the northern states and so on, that PN is so strong. Of course, they have to have single candidate, one to one. Right. Don't split the vote. Don't split the vote. You Correct. have no choice. You must work together. Yes. <laughs> because even working together, don't guarantee you win, but at least give you some chance. Split right. your votes, completely gone. Right. right. But in the south, where places where PH or AMNO is strong, at least one of them is so strong that PM wouldn't stand a chance to win, they can contest. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that voters would have to come out in all this constituency to give AMNO the best chance. Right. Right? And also PH voters would come out to give PH the best chance. If they find a way of campaigning without toxically attacking each other, that it's a win-win kind of situation, it, right? Friendly matches. Right. So then we, it's not easy because you now have to say, I'm better than a worthy opponent. How? Mm. You have to find a way, right? You have to set rules. But once that works out, both sides can actually get more voters going. Right. We have to win. So you have to come out to votes. Right. But that would spill over to area where they don't fight against each other. Right. Wow. Right? So that's one. Uh, Second way is to open up more electoral arena. You have two options. One, uh, one option is to have party lists, what I talk about now. So for example, as Islam, we have 22 seats. We add 11 seats on party lists. Mm -hmm. Then both PH and BN can nominate 11 candidates. And PN, of course, will come in as well. And then, when you did second votes, both sides just vote for them. So, AMNO supporters who either stay back at home because they cannot carry themselves to vote AMNO as PH number two, or even move over the other side because they really don't like PH to be AMNO boss, can now come in and vote. Right. And when they vote for AMNO, they will start thinking and say, AMNO main enemies, main rivals, is Pesatu and Pass. Right. Right? Why should I help them? Because that would weaken them. Yes. 
That's one way. Second way is to open up local elections. I'm not need that because if PH states were to start first, allowing local elections, AMNO would have a chance to win some Correct. local council right. seats. And why this is important? This allows AMNO to continue attracting young talents. Mm -hmm. Because if I join a party that never have a chance to win seats, I won't join. Right. That's why MCA lost talents to, you know, has, uh, not lost, suffer uh, lack of talents after 2008. Right. So I'm not need because to avoid Because they just it. lost them. I mean, you know, they just left. When, when you don't have a chance to win, Correct. why would I well, join a party? Absolutely. Right? I mean, so they have to go into that. Now, when it is open up in peer states, once it works out, the Malays don't fear about local elections. Amno can push for and say, we're going to do it in Pahang, in Johor, in Malacca, but we're also pushing you to open up us. Okay. Right? That allowed Amno to get seats. Most of all is that Amno need to get some seats in the north. If you have party list, Amno will be able to get some seats in the north. Right, right. 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 Because in Kelantan, in Tengganu, yeah, they so still have about to it, that around 30% of votes. Sure, sure. They just cannot win any seats under first possible. Correct. You need to give them the chance. So Amno need to be able to survive after elections. They can come back and form a coalition again. Right. Excellent. Well, you know, if I had a political party, you would be my strategist. <laughs> because at the end of the day, you want the country to win. Yes. Uh, that is the bottom line. Uh, yes. All of us want a win-win situation where, you know, there's peace and harmony. And so um, my, my, our closing segment is something that's very recent, uh, where we want to keep the government and give it its full run yeah. for four years, which is a fixed party, mm -hmm. a fixed uh, term parliament act. Yeah. Uh, we want to see, I want to hear your views on that. And perhaps that would give a, a good f a roundup of where we are in this country today.